Hi everybody, welcome back to Project Spatial. I am Katie Schroyer and I am here to increase your spatial impact. Now today I am talking about everything ArcGIS Online and how to get started. And when you're getting started, why don't you get started for free? Now, while I have had access to all of Esri's things from my full-time position, I wanted to dig in and see just what I could get for free and how far I could get with it. Okay, so I wanna see if we can get set up an account and get a map published online. And this way we'll be able to see just how much access we really get for free. Okay, so let's dive in and see just how far we can get. So first we have to set up an account. So if we go to rgis.com, we'll be able to start our account. Now you have to be able to enter in an email address and then you will select your username and you will add a password. Now, once you do all these things, they will send you a verification email. Get the verification email and click on the link. Once you click on the link, you will activate your account and you will have everything available to you. So on their landing page, they'll show a few things that they wanna feature and this way you can kind of see what's going on that's new and things that Esri's really proud of. So let's walk through the different tabs. On the overview page, you're going to get transferred actually to their sales page and it's going to walk you through everything about ArcGIS Online and all the different capabilities and pricing and a free trial and all that sort of thing. So if we go back, we can look at the pricing. Now for pricing, Esri has changed things up and they really have separated out to different user types. So you can now, on the business side, use a creator user type, which is kind of your entry level ArcGIS Online account. Um, and this gets you a lot of things because it gets you online, it gets you the app bundle, um, and it gives you a lot of capabilities that, that are just going to be your straight out Esri GIS. So this is all for 500 bucks a year. And then once you get this, you can add other users. So if you're doing a full business, you can add in a viewer, a field worker, an editor, and then you can also go up a level and do to the GIS professional. Now, the difference between the GIS professional and just a regular creator is the professional is actually going to give you like their desktop applications for ArcGIS Pro and ArcMap and going to give you some extensions depending on what level you choose. Now you can see that the prices jump up pretty high pretty quickly right here and that is by design. So Ezra is not cheap. They are an expensive program. But if you're a company that is going to be using GIS and really utilizing everything that Esri has to offer, I highly encourage you to do it because it is worth it. Um, you can also talk to an Esri representative if you're looking at adding a bunch of people and not just one or two because I can tell you I don't pay these kinds of prices. <laughs> so if we switch over to the individuals page, now this is where I think you really get the best bang for your buck because the thing is, is that Esri wants to sync the person that is just starting out. They want to get you using their your applications because that makes you a more valued employee and it also makes you push for Esri to be an investment for your company. So it's kind of part of their business model, but honestly, it's kind of smart. So if you are looking for it for personal use, which is means like you're using it for training, you're using it to highlight your talents, you're using it because you're not a student anymore, so you don't have access to that, but you don't have a job yet, so you, and you still wanna be able to gain skills, um, this is a great investment. So for $100 a year, you get a bunch that goes with it, and you can see what's all included. So you get the ArcGIS up, Pro and um, Arc Map. So those are the desktop applications. And this allows you to do a whole bunch of analysis and create really nice printable maps. You also get the desktop most popular extensions. So I don't know what all of the most popular extensions are, but I'm guessing that you're going to get a lot of basic spatial analysis extensions that are going to allow you to do you know, your clustering and do some maybe network analysis and that sort of thing. So definitely a nice way to learn some of the, some of the key functions that Esri gives you. So what else are you gonna get? You're gonna get software updates, you're going to get an online creator user type, which again, we said that's your basic ArcGIS online account, 
Um, and that will be really nice because then you can share all of the data that you are creating through ArcGIS Pro. Um, you get a hundred dollar, or excuse me, you get, you get a hundred credits of data storage, um, premium data access, geocoding and analysis. All of that is pretty cool when you get into ArcGIS Online. It's really nice how much you can do with that. You also get access to the Living Atlas and you get support. And one of the things that I think is really cool is that you get access to all of their self-paced online training. Now, the online training reserves that Esri has are actually really good and definitely worth the $100 alone. So we're gonna jump over the map tab real quick because um, I wanna look at the scene. Now, if you don't know what scenes are, they're basically a 3D representation map. So one thing that's kind of cool about Esri is if you have 3D data or if you just want to look at 3D data, you can plop it into these scenes and be able to investigate it with the Esri backgrounds. So they have a bunch of 3D backgrounds that are available to you and you can use them all and play around with them. They even have a mobile application that allows you to use these scenes in a mobile application, which if you're walking into an interview, and you've done something in a 3D scene and then you whip out your phone and show them on their mobile application during the interview, that's pretty cool. That's something that is going to stand out and probably not something that everybody's going to do. So it's kind of a cool little feature. Um, I haven't used a ton of 3D data just because I haven't had the business use case for it yet. Definitely something that you wanna be looking into if you are looking for a career where you want to be working in 3D representations. Okay, so in the groups tab, you can see all of the information that either your group has put together for you or stuff that you have shared out to another group. Now, obviously to be in a group, it's easier if you're in an organization because then you can use your organizational account that has everybody and then you can break people down in different groups and it's a good way to kind of organize your data and use restrictions on who can have access to what information. Um, it's a nice way to organize stuff, but as your free account, you're probably not gonna be involved in any groups, so we're just gonna kind of skim over this. So in your content tab, you will be able to um, add new items, create items, and then you will also be able to investigate the Living Atlas. You can see all of the different layers that are available to you through the Living Atlas. Now, this is really what is kind of cool about Esri is because there's so many people that are using ArcGIS online and putting out public information that you can find a lot of information on here and sometimes information that people don't want you to find because they don't realize that they're sharing it out publicly. Um, so be a little bit careful. You definitely don't want to be reproducing something that somebody unintentionally put out there. Make sure that you're checking for use cases and descriptions and metadata and all of the, all of the things <laughs> before you start reproducing with this information. So when you first open up the map tab, you are going to get a blank map that's just going to have a basic Esri um, background on it. So this one is centered around the United States and it's just the topographic base map. The nice thing about this is it gives you at least a start to what you wanna do and that you can see that they have a little step-by-step -step instructions over here. So if we move over to the content tab, that is where you're going to see all of the layers of information that you have available to you. And you can see right now, we just have this background map, um, base map available. If you go over to your legend, once you start adding information, you'll be able to see all of your legend for all of your different symbology here. Um, it's a nice reference, especially if you're not quite sure how the things are represented when you get new information, um, especially if you're pulling information off the Living Atlas. Sometimes it's not quite clear what all the symbols mean, so it's nice to have that legend easily available. We can also change our different base maps, and there's a lot of reasons why you want to change the base map on your map. You want to pick a base map that is going to feature and highlight the information that you are trying to make prevalent. So don't pick a really busy base map if your information is not going to stand out from it. And if the information in the base map isn't contributing to your overall story that you're trying to tell, then just leave it out. Get, use one of the nice gray ones or one of the dark ones, depending on what you're working with. 
um, or if it's something that's navigational, you might want to use just a basic street map. Um, really kind of play around with it and see how changing the base map will change the perception of what your data looks like. Hey, if you guys are getting value out of this, please make sure you hit subscribe and give this video a like. It really helps me spread the word about GIS and helps increase your spatial impact. Also, if you guys want to see more of my information, make sure you check out the links down below because I will have a link to my newsletter down there. And trust me, I have some really awesome things that are coming up that you do not want to miss. So make sure you sign up for the newsletter down below. I want to go in and add some information because who wants just a basic base map? I don't have any layers to search for because I don't haven't created any information yet. So I'm going to browse the living atlas layers. And you can see here that you can also add a layer from the web or add a layer from a file, which they give you different file types, such as your shapefile, your CSV, your text file, um, GPX, and GeoJSON files. So you can import all of those and it will actually create a web service for you that you can use in your online maps. You can also add map notes, a template, for points, lines, and polygons that they think that will meet your needs. So you can go in and just pick a regular map note, or you can go in and pick something like the parks and planning. And when you create this, this allows you to add these features to your map and kind of gives you a nice little template to work with so you don't have to go and hunt and pick and try to find all the symbology on your own. I am not going to worry about using the map notes right now. So I'm just going to turn them off by unchecking the layer. And then let's go and see what we can find in the Living Atlas. And I am going to enter parks because I already have that parks layer. So let's see what we have here. We've got something for Washington State. Um, how about this? So we have Zion National Park Trails. Let's kind of see. Oh, it's nice and up to date from May 7th. And it says this is a feature layer utilizing data from the National Park Service depicts trails within Zion National Park. Gives you a really nice description here, a little overview of what it looks like, and your other basic metadata information. Awesome, cool. So we're going to add this to the map. And it's going to automatically zoom us to the layer. And I'm going to close out this so we can get back to our content. And now we have some nice um, trails on our map, which is awesome. They look great. So I'm just going to leave these as, you know, defaulted symbology. I'm not going to worry about it too much. I am kind of curious what's the difference between the red and the blue. So let's go over to our legend. So it looks like the red is actually the park trails and the blue is unmaintained trails. So that's good to know because, you know, sometimes I don't like going down an unmaintained trail. Um, especially if it's really overgrown. I, yeah, I'm not a big, I'm not a big vegetation person. I don't like to have to cut through vegetation. I kind of like having a regular trail, but um, that's just me. So while this is kind of a nice base map to have because we have the national park in the background, I can't really see anything about the terrain. So I don't really know why all of these trails are so zigzaggy and why they have all of these little iterations. Um, and it's just, it doesn't give me a lot of information. So let's try a different base map. Let's try the terrain with labels. Okay, cool. So I really like this. You know, I can see that this is a lot of terrain and I definitely would want to be wearing my hiking boots if I was going to be going on these trails. <laughs> so if we zoom in here, you can kind of see that this one looks like it follows almost maybe like an old an old uh, river, or that actually might be a current river, but you can see that it sits right in that river valley, so you can kind of get an idea of what's going on there. Um, and then like this one looks like it's going more on like the hilltop and that sort of thing. But still, I'm having trouble like picking out the trails amongst all of this terrain. The terrain's kind of a little bit overwhelming in this area. So I'm going to just tone that down a little bit by just desaturating it. So let's go into the transparency and we'll bring it down and we'll go here and set the transparency, bring it down to like 50%. 
Now the train reference layer, that is the labels that I have on here. And I'm okay with the labels being 100% because I really do want the labels to be on there. But now see, like I can see now that this is a trail up to an observation point, which before I couldn't even tell that because there was just so much terrain going on. And I did pull these terrain down a little bit here. Let's bump that up a little bit more. Maybe we'll do 50 instead of 75. Uh, okay, that's about good enough. So I kind of like focusing on this area. It's nice to have it a little bit zoomed in and more. You can see that there's a Zion Lodge here. You can see the different mountains and all of that sort of thing. So I, I'm kind of happy with this. What I could do right now if I wanted to is I could edit and add some of these map notes that are in here because remember if we go back to our legend you can see all the different symbology that all these map notes have. So, But I, we don't need to do that today. I don't want to get that far into it. So I am actually going to remove this. So we'll go down to remove. And yes, I want to remove layers. So now I just have my trails and my terrain, which is gonna be good enough for us. So I'm gonna go up and save. And we're gonna call this Zion Trails. And we'll put in our tags. So we'll trail, park, oops, Zion. And I'm also going to put in here a delete because whenever I do anything that is just testing, I'll either put in at least test or I'll also put in delete. So I know that once I'm done with this and if I come across on a later date, I can just go in and delete it and I don't have to worry about it. And it's going to save to my main folder and that is just fine with me. I don't have, to, I'm not worrying about categorizing all of it and that sort of thing. So now that it's saved, I can go in and actually share this map. And I can link it to, you know, an email if I wanted to put it on that or if I wanted to send the link out on my web page or something like that, I can do that. Um, I also want to make sure that I share this out to everyone so it is public so anybody can receive that. Then you can also see that a few things pop up. So there's Facebook and Twitter that I can now share this out on easily. And then I can also embed this into a website. So if I click on that, It'll give me all the different settings that I can choose from and how I want it to embed and how I want it to look and every and all of that. And remember, I'm doing all of this for free, guys. Like, this is pretty cool. So if I go back, I can also go in and create a web app. Now, I'm not going to go down the list of all the web apps. Um, if you guys are Esri people, you know about the web apps. If you're not Esri people, um, you might want to check it out. It is pretty nice. It basically creates a web page for your map that gives you a ton more functionality. Um, maybe I'll go into that another time. Actually, if you guys want to see a video on that, let me know. Put a comment down in the links below and I will go over something like that for you later. So there's so many other things that you can do with ArcGIS Online, and I don't want to get into all of that because I want to keep this at least a little bit um, under control, but I could honestly spend hours on this just going over all the different capabilities. I really encourage you guys to go out to play around with this if this is something that you're interested. Um, if you are looking to get into GIS and you're not sure if you want to go to college or if you want to invest in that certificate, or you just need to be able to get some better skills because you haven't had that much experience yet, check out the $100 a year level. Really, that's 100 bucks for the year, and you are going to get access to just a ton of information and capabilities with that $100. So check it out. I will put links down below, and I hope you guys are good um, and you're doing well, and I will see you soon. Bye!